Now, the last thing we'll be looking at is what's called the center of pressure. Okay, that's the third big thing we're going to deal with here, which is the center of pressure. Now, what in the world is this center of pressure, and why do we care? Well, let's go ahead and give you an idea. So, first off, let's do it through an example. Let's imagine here that I have a plate, okay? I have a plate right here. There it is. And it is covered in a big heaping helping of snow. Now I could figure out how the force is acting on that plate from the snow. As well as my length right here. So in this case, we would have a uniform loading. We're just assuming it's uniform, making it a lot easier on ourselves. Terrible handwriting there. Sorry about that. Washington, my handwriting is better than it comes up here. It is just the computer killing me. Okay. Now, if I want to, I can calculate the moment at any particular point. So I can go from my flat plate with a pressure distribution on it to a different case, or I should say force distribution if we're doing it linear here, to a different case. So in one case right here, I have a moment calculated around this point right here. I'll call this the moment at x equals 0. Why? Because x equals 0. There we go. And what I'm going to find in this case, if I calculate it, because I've got these forces going all the way down there, is that my moment at x equals 0 is not going to be equal to zero. It will have some finite value. However, I didn't have to choose that point. I could have chosen anywhere else I wanted to. And so in the second case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose to take the moment around the center. So right here, take the moment right there. This will be the moment at x over two. Or sorry, goodness. X is equal to length over two. So I still have all those forces coming down, but now there's an equal amount of forces on both sides. There you go, beautiful. So my moment at x is equal to length over two is equal to zero, okay? So that would be my center pressure in this case, okay? That is my center pressure. The center pressure is like a tipping point, a balancing point. So to draw it on a diagram, I can actually calculate my moment as a function of position. And let's keep the same color here. I'm trying to keep the color scheme right. And what I would see is that there is some point where it tips. And in this case, that point is at L over 2. Okay, now airfoils are not nearly as simple as a flat plate covered with snow. <laughs> I get that. Airfoils have very complicated pressure distributions and shear stretch distributions. And we've seen that through my beautiful pictures in the past. You know, we have the airfoil, we have our distribution of pressures around it. Looking something like this. Now, 
even in these cases though, they still have a balance point. So how do we find that? Well, it's not terribly difficult. Let's just go ahead and define some terms. <laughs> I say it's not very difficult. It's not very difficult by equation. So first off, this XCP, as you saw earlier, that is equal to our center of pressure. And then another thing we're going to need is our moment for on the leading edge, which we'll do per unit span. Whoop. Trying to keep the same color scheme. There we go. So we have these two, and then we put A prime along the cord. If that's the case, then n prime must cause our moment. So I'm drawing this again one more time on our guy right here. So here is our chord line. And I'm saying that a prime is on that chord prime. And since that chord prime goes through the point we're taking our moment about right here, a prime cannot cause the moment around the leading edge because its distance, its perpendicular distance is zero. However, n prime can, and since that n prime is the only thing left, that is what's causing our moment. What we then learn is that, okay, well, if this moment is a force times a the distance, then my center pressure must be this distance right here from the leading edge to where n prime is acting in this case. So we get a very, very simple equation. Since my moment is equal to a force times a distance, then my moment around the leading edge is going to be equal to n prime times my center of pressure. And therefore, I get that my center of pressure is equal to negative m prime times the leading edge over n prime. And this is approximately equal to I'm around the leading edge over the lift per unit span. Not exactly. That works for small angles of attack. So great, this is super easy, all nice and happy and good. <sighs> Sadly though, it's not all that useful. You're like, what, why do we calculate it? You're calculating these things to give yourself a basis and also to understand some of the terms because you need to build this up in practice. So Sadly, it's not really all that helpful. And why is it not all that helpful? Because it's a function of a whole bunch of things. And it moves. 
just because it's the center pressure at one setting does not will mean it will be for all of them. There we go. So do something like this. XCP is equal to a function of a lot of things like velocity and pressure and the shear stress and everything else that can come in there that can cause slight differences in the pressure distribution and the forces. And you're like, okay, well, how do I find airflow performance if all this stuff can change? Well, sum it all up, in practice, like I said in our very first lecture, if I can actually write. Airflow performance is already documented. In tables. So you just look it up. I'll be showing you how to do that. And we usually look at it in terms of lift prime, drag prime, so drag per unit span, and our moment at the quarter chord, why the quarter chord, we'll find that out eventually, per unit span. And if you look there, you'll see various di diagrams that look kind of like the following. As a note, this is, um, if you want to look at these right today, you can go to airfoiltools.com. I'll be showing you how to do that eventually. And you can actually see all kinds of data for all kinds of airfoils there. And that'll be very important for us as we go forward. Okay, something like this. It's looking pretty good. And for lift, I would have a corporate like this. For drag, kind of like that. And for moment, something like this. Angle of attack. There we go, and this would be zero right there, zero, zero, and zero. Perfect. So you can see all the kinds of things on airfoiltools.com and other websites like it. And we'll see how to do that later. But that's it for now. So thank you for listening, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.